All right, Algebra 1 kids. Uh, we've been working on writing y equals mx plus b equations in Desmos, and I thought of a fun new way to teach it to you using Desmos, and I think it'll be a little bit easier for you, so I wanted to make sure I could show this to you right away. Okay, so I'm going to switch over to Desmos here, and we'll do it in there, okay? All right, guys, so we are here. I've got Desmos open. I've got a bunch of practice problems here that we're going to do, okay? So if you look at numbers 1 through 4, you can see that these problems are ones where you're given the slope and you're given a point that the line goes through, okay? So how I've taught you guys so far is that, right, we know that slope is the m value, so that's going to go in the m position in my equation, y equals negative 3x, but what we don't know to be able to fully answer this, I don't know my b number, I don't know that b value, right? But I know that it has this slope, and I, I know that it goes through this random point. Okay, so watch this. We're going to use Desmos' help here. So I'm going to type in the coordinates of that point, negative 2, comma, negative 1. And remember that this point, right, it, it's going to show up right here. That's an x value and a y value, okay? But now look what I'm going to do. I'm going to type in the equation y equals negative 3x plus b. Okay, again, I don't know my b number yet, but and Desmos is yelling at you. It's saying, oh, you got too many variables. Try. So, right, it doesn't know what this B value is. It doesn't understand. Okay, so what you can do, though, is you can add a slider in here, okay? And what that is, is that allows you to change what the B value is, okay? So what you want to do is you want this line to cross through that point, okay? And it's usually almost always going to be a whole number here, okay? So not a decimal like 6.2 or whatever. Like that looks like it's close, but if you see, okay, negative seven, right? This is a line that goes through this point. So what does that B value mean? That B value is telling you, right? It's saying negative seven, okay? So that's gonna be this number in my equation, right? So instead of saying negative three X plus B, it's gonna say Y equals negative three X minus seven, okay? And if you don't believe me, type in the equation separately, Y equals negative three X minus seven, and you see that it's the exact same line, it goes through this point, very good, right? So how nice is that? Is it, it if you know the slope, and you know the, right, you, you can just play around with it until you find uh, that B value, okay? So let's do another one like that, okay? Let's try number two down here, okay? So a slope of three comma five, and it goes through the point zero comma four. So if you're really observant, you might be able to know what the answer, the full answer to this is right away. But let's just go through the same process, okay? So again, I know my slope is 3 fifths, okay? So I equals 3 fifths x plus b, okay? And again, what I don't know is my b number. So let's type in that point, 0 comma 4, okay? And again, you might notice something about where that point is, okay? But if I type in the equation, y equals 3 fifths, times x plus b, okay? And again, Desmos doesn't know what b is yet. You have to tell it that, okay? And so what you do, again, you want to slide this until Desmos tells you, right, or it matches up exactly with the point there, okay? And so you notice the b number here, when it's 4, it's going right through that green point, right? Because that means my b number is going to be 4, okay? So again, I can go into my equation and say, okay, B is 4, okay? And again, I said you could know that, notice that ahead of time too. This point just happens to be a point right on the y-axis, right? And that makes it the y-intercept or the B value. All right, let's just do two more like that, okay? And uh, 4 is going to be a little different, but 3 will be the same way. So um, so looking at number 3, so it has a slope of 1 fourth, and it goes through the point 8 comma negative 1. So 8 comma negative 1, I type that point, it shows up over here. And then again, I know my slope is... 1 fourth, so I can type y equals 1 fourth x and then plus b, right? I don't know my b value yet, so I can type in y equals 1 fourth times x plus b. Again, it doesn't know what b is, so you add that slider in there and you say, okay, where do I move this line? Where do I slide it so that it goes through my green point? Boom, right there, right? b is negative 3. So if b is negative 3, it's going to go through my point, which means that's my b value. So minus 3, okay, right there. Okay, now, number 4, I said it's different, okay? Um, 
So look, slope is undefined. So when you see that word undefined here, that should ring some alarm bells in your head, right? Like what you should be saying, saying to yourself is, okay, that's not going to be a normal line. If it has an undefined slope, again, it's undefined. And so what I hope is that you remember the acronym VUX, right? VUX, V for vertical, U for undefined, and X for X equals whatever number. Okay, that's what I hope you remember, all right? Um, but say you, if you didn't remember that, I'll show you how you can get the equation, okay? You kind of have to remember parts of this, right? Undefined and, and, and tying together undefined with vertical is really important. So let's still type in that point, 5 comma 1, okay? So 5, okay, and comma 1, there's the point right there. And again, the slope is undefined, so what does that mean? Okay, again, when you remember the acronym VUX, right? Vertical lines have an undefined slope. So this line is going to be vertical, okay? Vertical, straight up and down. If this is going to be vertical, right, a vertical line, an example of that would be like x equals 2, right? It's going straight up and down. That's a vertical line, okay? So you have to think, okay, if this line is vertical, what, what value would it have to have, right? x equals what for it to go through that green point? It would have to be 5, right? 5 would have to be the x value that it's equal to for it to go through this point, okay? So my equation here would just be simply x equals 5. Okay. And again, the other way you can get that is it's always going to be the x value of your point, right? If it's a vertical line like this, if the slope's undefined, it's a vertical vertical line, x equals the, the x value, right? So x equals 5 because that's, that's the value of your x and your point. So there's a few problems like that, okay? Now you might be saying, oh, these are going to be harder, I bet. Not that much harder, actually, okay? A little extra step in here, but... Um, we can still get it using the help of Desmos, okay? So numbers 5 and 6 say, um, right, it's giving you two points that it goes through instead of just the slope in a point, okay? So we have to do an extra step because I don't know what my m value is to type in the equation like this, all right? But I can still use Desmos' help, okay? I type in 4, 7, and I see that point shows up, okay? And then separately, I type in my other point, 13, negative 11, Okay, now for this point, you might have to zoom out a little bit, and you see that it's all the way down here. Okay, so it's helpful here to have, make sure that your, your point or your grid here is counting by ones. Okay, if you can't, sometimes you might have to zoom out a lot, and you can't count by ones, but for this strategy, it is helpful so you can count by ones. Okay, again, the other way you could do this is by doing the slope formula. Okay, right, do the y value minus the y value, so negative 11 minus 7 over 13 minus 4 and find your slope that way, okay? But I'm just showing you another way just in case that's too hard for you. All right, so what we can do, right, if I count from this point to this point how many spots I am moving, right, to get from here to here, from my red point, my first point, to my blue point, how many spots am I moving? And again, we just like we would count if we were drawing the line, we count up and down first. So the red line's on top, so I count down. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18. I move down 18 spots, okay, down. So that is going to be the top number of my slope, okay. So it's going to be negative 18 over, right, because I'm moving down. That's why it's negative. Negative 18 over, I counted it here. How many spots over? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. So net, down 18, right 9. So this is a big slope, okay, negative 18 over 9. These points are pretty far away. But what do you notice about this, okay? Negative 18 divided by 9, you might notice that, right, 9's, 18 is divisible by 9, right? If I did 18 divided by 9, I will get negative 2 or negative 2 over 1, right? So that would actually be my slope. My m value is negative 2, okay? So what does that mean? That means that I could actually count down 2 over 1, a bunch of times and eventually get there okay I don't have to count the full 18 and the full 9 if I just counted down to right one down to right one over and over and over again I would eventually get there okay so that's cool okay now what do I know about this line I figured out the slope so I know that the slope is going to be negative 2 okay and now I'm at the same place that I was up here right so y equals negative 2x 
plus, and what's still, I don't know. I don't know still my B value, right? I still don't know that. So I can just do, just like I did numbers one through four, type in y equals negative two x plus b. Okay, and again, Desmos isn't showing the line. So okay, Desmos is gonna want you to put in that b value, right, that slider. So you press add slider. Now the only problem is with, with when you have problems like this, okay, where the numbers are a little bit bigger, look, right, it's not gonna be down here. I'm gonna have to go up, but it only goes up to 10, right? And you can see the line doesn't quite go through these points yet. So this means that you have to manually change it to, you could say b equals 11, b equals 12. You can see it's getting closer and closer, so you just keep trying 13, 14, 15, 15, right? When b is 15, there you go. It's going through your points right there. You see 16 is a little bit too high, so you know for sure it's 15 is your b value, okay? So you can go into your equation and say y equals negative 2x plus 15, okay? There you go. There is your equation right there the full thing slopes negative 2 b value is 15 okay last one number six goes through these two points okay so I'll get rid of all this stuff okay and I'm gonna type those two points in okay so negative 3 comma negative 8 alright and then my second point 6 comma negative 2 and so again I don't know my slope right now okay it doesn't tell me that at the beginning and obviously I don't know my my y-intercept. Okay, so I'm going to have to count. Okay, again, you can do your slope formula, negative 2 minus negative 8 over 6 minus negative 3, and find the slope that way. Or you could count, right, from your first point to your second point. I'm moving up 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So up 6 over 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Okay, so up 6 right 9 is my slope, right? And those will both be positive because they're both the positive directions. So the slope is 6 over 9. But again, I can adjust this to, right, or I can reduce the fraction, right? 6 divided by 9, I could change that. If I divide both the top and bottom by 3, I'll get 2 thirds, okay? Which means, again, to check that, if I counted up 2, right 3, up 2, right 3, up 2, right 3, I would get there, okay? So I know my slope is 2 thirds. So that's my m value in my equation, y equals 2 thirds x plus b. And once you know your slope, then you guys know the deal. You just type in 2 thirds x plus b in here. Get that slider in there so you can adjust, right? You're not going up, so you got to go down, 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 down until you get to your points, and then it's right there. b value is negative 6. So you could change that in your equation to say y equals 2 thirds x minus six, and there you go. So there's a little bit, I hope that's helpful. I hope that can be a helpful alternate strategy if plugging into the equations, doing it algebraically is too hard, okay? So there's another method for you, okay? So let me know if you got questions, send me an email or something, and I'd love to help you more. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys later.